people who have to worry about this storm. The animals, too, especially those who are in shelters. Yeah, and Fox 13's Walter Allen is live for us at the uh, Humane Center, uh, the Society of Tampa Bay, to see how they're preparing there. Good morning to you, Walter. Lauren Russell, good morning to you. You know, we need a little bit of break from all the seriousness, so I got it for you. Finnegan, look at this face. I don't know how old Finnegan is, but Finnegan is just absolutely adorable. Look at this face right here. Uh, we needed a little bit of break from all of this Hurricane Irma stuff. I, there we go. That, that was my prop. That was my prop for the live shot. Finnegan, there you go. There you go. Have a little fun. Uh, yeah, we're worried about uh, the Humane Society, just like we're worried about all of the human beings as well. Uh, make sure everybody is hunkered down and ready to go to ride out Hurricane Irma. Uh, behind me, you're looking at all this glass. And, and of course, that was, that was the big red flag driving up here. Talking with the folks here at Humane Society, I mean, if you listen... That's solid glass. And in talking with the people here at Humane Society, uh, this building is set to handle a Category 3, a Category 4, uh, and you're saying to yourself, we're going to see those force winds here at the Humane Society. So this building will be tested, but it's only about five years old. So it should should be able to handle everything that's going to go on uh, in the next 24 hours. But look at everything here at the Humane Society. Everything is ready to go, garbaged up. Here, this is the A-team. Everybody you see behind me, this is the A-team. And these folks will stay here during the hurricane. So a big round of applause for you guys for what you're doing. They're going to be here at the Humane Society, uh, making sure that the animals are uh, taken care of, that they get their medication, that they get fed, uh, whatever exercise that they can get. Uh, we want to walk to the back where some of the animals are. But this is a pretty sturdy building, and I do want to point out this. Like I mentioned, they will be here during the hurricane. I mean, look at this. They got, they got their beds. They brought their families here. Uh, these folks are going to be here throughout the storm for the next 24 hours, however long uh, it needs to be. And the best thing about this building is, uh, much like a lot of television stations here in Tampa, is if their power goes out, they have huge, huge generators to make sure that the lights can stay on. Uh, they have generators for um, the air conditioning, that sort of thing. Lon. Hey, good morning. Uh, how are you guys doing? I mean, are you um, nervous? Uh, we're, we're nervous, as everybody else is probably nervous. Um, we're tired. Um, a lot of the A-team staff and regular staff did a lot of prep work over the last few days and everything. But everybody's here ready you know we're ready to hunker down we've got all the supplies like you said we have a massive generator outside this building can take it hopefully we don't push that level um, we've got an on-call doctor with us here too also dr. Cornette Good morning. Good morning. and Sherry our CEO and Pam our director of operations there should be here just shortly uh, now in talking with Sherry we had a live interview with her over the phone yesterday uh, some of these cages are empty and that's a good thing it is a good thing um, at the last minute you know, we're, we're part of the emergency placement partnership with the Humane Society of the United States so we reached out to them they answered back they came in yesterday Today, and they took out about what 53 dogs, 55, 55 dogs, uh, dogs and cats from us, and then they flew them up to New Jersey on a chartered flight. And so they're going to stay up there. They're going to get adopted up there. So we've got room now for after the storm passes. There's going to be lots of stray animals. There's going to be a, you know a lot of wild animals running around. So we can take we can take in a lot. Hopefully the shelter will be survive on the shelter side, and we'll be able to take them in all over there. Yeah, because that's significantly older than this building. Yeah, much much older. So in different building structure. Um, let's talk about some of these. Animal. A, a lot of them are here because they need uh, medical attention. They need their meds and stuff like that. Yeah, these are our sick ones. So these are the ones that have severe URI. They're ones that weren't healthy enough to fly. So we have to give them meds, nebulize them, treat them throughout the storm, and just make sure they get over that. So that's why we do have the ones we have. Other than that, it would have been nice to get rid of all of them so we had space for all new ones. Yeah. Um, I think one of the reasons we talked about it, that you guys received the help that you did, is because you guys help out so many other shelters. So when Houston happened, you took about a bunch of uh, animals in from Louisiana, so Louisiana would have space for the animals from Houston, and now other people are helping you guys out. Right, and that's, like I said, that's all part of the emergency placement partnership that we have with the uh, Humane Society of the United States. So we, we, we always bring in when we can. We, you know, we always bring in locally, of course, but you know, they reached out to us, so we, we brought in some of their animals, which allowed them room so they can take in stray animals after the storm. Uh, what do you anticipate? Uh, 
uh, you know, animals and, and severe weather usually don't, they don't mix. So uh, what are you anticipating? Um, well, the good thing is, you know, they're in a safe environment, yeah. but with the A-team here, we can constantly chuck on them all night long throughout the night, um, you know, sleeping in shifts and stuff, just to give them comfort and stuff like that. The dogs, we're obviously that we have another room we're going to take out. We want to walk them every so often so they're not just cramped up in a little space. Yeah, they burn off a little energy. Yeah, too. hopefully burn off a little energy, yeah. yes. Uh, for both of you, I would assume you moved your families in and you have your pets here. Um, did you ever think that you'd ever be doing this? No. Uh, when I was driving here, it was just pretty sad and it just, you know, it was reality. This is really happening. How about you? Yeah, my family actually stayed at home in Brandon okay. just because the distance and to stay at the house, so. But, uh, yeah. Well, that means you're staying here, though, right. away from your family. How's that? Well, it's it's a little nerve-wracking, but, you know, I know they'll be safe over there. I'll be over here. Probably the water will be the biggest thing getting us back and forth yeah. once this is over, but it would be hard to get here to help the animals if I wasn't here to begin with, mm -hmm. so it's probably better off that I'm here than we're separated. Well, thanks everything yeah. for everything you guys do. Uh, we really appreciate it, and I, I know they can't tell you, but uh, they appreciate it as well, yeah, for sure. You. All right, guys, uh, Laura Russell, toss it back in you. It's, it's amazing that they're they're going to ride it out here. And, and when you think about it, yeah, you, you kind of have to with these animals that that need help. Yeah. But uh, it is, it, it's amazing work that they do. It sure is. So true. Great people. All right, thanks, Walter. We'll see